Hi everyone, I'm Jody. welcome to my channel, and if you have watched me for a while, welcome to the new set, the new background. I hope you guys like it. I just wanted to create something completely different, a space for you to come and just relax and chill out and be able to just enjoy the information coming to you, but in a cool, calming, relaxing environment, but it still says, you know, we're here for beauty and makeup and glam tips. So I've had a lot of fun designing this and I hope you love it as much as I do. It's just, it's just my happy place now. It's just a place that I like to come and just be zen. So I hope you find that as well. For those of you that are new, welcome. This channel is all about helping busy and ambitious women and moms just like you get quick pieces of information that's going to help you feel your most uniquely beautiful, but also help you relax and feel as though you are amongst friends. We love sharing things in the comments. We love learning from one another. So while this channel has my name on it and I'm the one that produces it, it is meant for all of us to share ideas and brainstorm and product ideas. So please feel free to leave your remarks in the comment section and just share if you have some things to say about the content or if you have a certain product that's related to the content that you think would be valuable, we would love to hear it. Today's video, we are gonna talk about the common mistakes women over 40, 50, 60, 70 are making and applying their makeup that might be aging them instead of the effect that we're looking for and that's to just make us look our most youthful us, not trying to look like our 20 or 30 year old self. Those days are gone. We just wanna embrace and look the best at this point in our life that we can. So I'm gonna walk you through some of these mistakes that you might be making and share with you some techniques and products that will help you in your evolution of your makeup application. And some are what you might consider beginner mistakes. Some are definitely more advanced. So wherever you are in your skill level and your comfort level in your makeup application, there will be tips in here for you as well. Before we start our list of mistakes, I have to say, from last week's video, you guys, I chickened out. I totally chickened out. I was real brave on camera, right? And I'm like, I'm gonna change my nail polish to this color because I always wear pink or pale pink or white. And so I went in with the best intentions yesterday to the salon. I, I gave him this color. I said, could you please do my hands and my toes in this color? Cause it's spring and I'm evolving and I'm really going on the wild side. After my pedicure, I saw my toes and I was like, pump the brakes, back it up. I can't do it on my hands. It just doesn't look right on my pinkish, pale pinkish, pale white skin tone. I know you guys are probably going, Jody. really, it's nail polish. And I know it's nail polish, but, and I love purple, clearly. So I don't know why I couldn't do it, but don't be too disappointed. I did go pink. I mean, it's not even that far off. What is my problem? So if you are ready to tackle some common mistakes that you might be making in your application, hit that subscribe button and let's go. All right, let's get this look started so that we can look our best without feeling like we're looking older because that, my friends, is not the key or the priority of makeup. So the first thing that I like to do is start with a good exfoliant. And this is a step that a lot of people skip because they think that perhaps as you age, you may not need to exfoliate or it may be too harsh for your skin. When in fact, after you turn 40 and 50 and your skin starts to get more dry, that's really the time that you need it more than any other. I like to think about exfoliating as if you were to paint a wall and you sandblasted or power washed the wall, there's still gonna be particles of the old paint left on. Well, if you just go and add paint on top of that sandblasted wall, the paint is gonna grab to all of those little pieces of paint chips that have been left behind, and then you're gonna get a very uneven, unappealing looking texture. That is exactly the way exfoliation works for your foundation. It allows you to remove the dead skin cells so that your foundation, your base, your tinted moisturizer, whatever you lay on top, really lays nicely and smooth and is not grabbing onto dried pieces of skin and leaving behind that patchy look. I like to use this one by Frank Body. The reason I like this one, it's perfect for those of you with sensitive skin because it's got very soft granules in it so that it does allow you to get rid of the dead skin cells and really provide a smooth surface for your foundation, but it does so without harshly scratching the skin of your face. It's a very gentle soft scrub and I like to use this about once a week and I'll leave all these products linked down below in case you wanted to take a look at any of them. The second thing that we tend to not do as often as we should as we age is to hydrate our skin. So exfoliate and then hydrate, even though those fall into more of the skincare category, they are an important prep 
to the makeup application. And so to hydrate my skin, of course I use my vitamin C from SkinCeuticals. I use the L'Oreal Moisture Filler with collagen in it. I use about that much because you don't wanna provide a slippery surface for your foundation because that's where you'll start to get that runniness or that patchiness. And after we've let that hydration really absorb into our skin, we're gonna add sunscreen, which I know you guys don't need me to tell you about that one. It's one of the most, most, most important. So you're probably like, okay, we know this is the beginners, but we got that part. Now let's talk about that delicate under eye area. We are starting to get more wrinkles in that area where we maybe didn't have in our 30s and our 40s perhaps. And so we have to change the way we apply product under here and in fact, what products we use. If you have discoloration, you really wanna avoid trying to cover that discoloration with a thick concealer. You wanna apply a thin color corrector and then a thin concealer. Two light products is always better than one really thick, heavy product. And let me show you what I mean. For me, I get a little bit purple underneath my eyes, so I like to use a color corrector. And I love this one by Stila because it's a one-step color corrector serum, so it hydrates underneath my eye as it is color correcting. And if you suffer from purple or blue or red under your eyes, then this is a good step to apply a nice hydrating serum with some color corrector. So with just a half a pump of that color corrector, you can see it's I've already neutralized the purple and red underneath that eye compared to this one. And because of that serum formula, while it covered the discoloration, it didn't crease and fall into fine lines and wrinkles. It's just a nicer, softer look. And that's an important step instead of trying to just grab one product being a thicker concealer and think you're gonna cover up this discoloration and brighten the under eye area with one thick product. That's gonna be a really big recipe for disaster because the thicker formula is gonna really settle into fine lines and wrinkles and because of that thickness, it's going to appear that those fine lines and wrinkles are in fact deeper than they are. And I don't know about you guys, but that is not what I am trying to achieve. If you do need a thick concealer, that is totally fine. You just wanna make sure that this under eye area is very hydrated, some good serum, and then let that absorb in. If you apply a thicker concealer on top of a serum that has not fully absorbed, you're gonna get that slippage and you're also gonna get some transfer from your lashes. So that serum's really gotta sit there. All right, so now that we've neutralized that area, I'm gonna go in with my concealer. And I like to use the Tarte Creaseless Concealer, and I have this in N20. And for this, I just like to take it off of the doe foot applicator. You can use this however you want. As we get further down this list, you'll see that one of the things that we're constantly doing as we age is we're using brushes and tools that are too big for the more precise area that we are trying to correct on our face. So as we go through this, just be thinking about what tools you would be grabbing and is it too big? Because it's not, we can't be as free with things like blush and highlight and powder and concealers that we used to be able to. We've gotta use smaller brushes to be very precise so that we're not making things worse by trying to make them better. So I'm just gonna go right in this area to help brighten it as well as finish concealing. While we're covering stuff up, let's just go ahead and cover up that nice little blemish that decided to say, good morning, hello, are you filming today? Perfect, let me show up. Um, okay, next, what we wanna talk about is our foundation. Now here's a big mistake that is easily made, but yet easily corrected, and that is applying the wrong formula of foundation and way too much foundation. So let me explain. If you have oily skin, you're gonna wanna apply a mattifying primer to your skin first to keep your foundation from sliding as you're producing oil throughout the day. Now a cream foundation is typically the last resort for those of you with oily skin because you've got a really emollient, creamy foundation on top of a primer, on top of your oily skin, and that just really allows things to move and slide around. Your best bet is a, either a mineral powder or a powder foundation or a liquid mattifying foundation. Those will help you from looking shiny throughout the day and allow your foundation to stay in place longer. If you have combination skin and your combination skin is pretty aggressive in the oily areas and the dry, meaning they're both fairly extreme, then your best bet would be to pick up a foundation that is more in the liquid space and then use a mattifying primer through the areas that you are oily. If you have dry skin, you're gonna wanna stay away from mattifying primers and in fact, go with a hydrating primer and a creamy type of a foundation. And from cream, you can also go to liquid, but you wanna avoid powders for sure and a matte foundation. So once you've identified what formula is best for your specific skin, 
Then we need to talk about how much you wear. How you apply each of these different formulas of foundation is important, but the bottom rule here is less is more. So if you like the way your skin looks, then apply that foundation to just some of the areas where you feel like you've got some discoloration or some imperfections that you wanna cover up. If you wanna cover up all of your skin, but you want your skin to come through, then a tinted moisturizer or a tinted serum might be the best bet for you. But again, if you have oily skin, a mattifying primer underneath any type of a serum is gonna be really important to avoid that kind of slippery mess that we can get towards the end of the day. Now, because I'm combination, I'm gonna use a little bit of a primer just through this area, and I've been loving this Poreless Putty Primer by e.l.f., and as I've gotten older, my T-zone is wider. Like more, My forehead is more oily, and then I'm more oily down through here. And we're not gonna talk about minimizing pores because as I shared with you guys in my last video, we're gonna just kind of let that go for a while and not make such a big deal out of our pores because we all have them. So next I'm gonna go in with my foundation and I am using a hydrating foundation. This has hyaluronic acid in it. It's also a matte foundation. And I am going to, this is by YSL and this is in MN5. And because as we age, a matte finish ages us a little more, I'm gonna add some Glotion by L'Oreal and I'm just gonna add a little bit of a dot. And because we're going into the summer months and I don't want a thick foundation, I wanna share this out, so I'm using a damp beauty sponge. It's just a nice, soft coverage. It covers all the imperfections and leaves a little bit of a glow behind. Now moving on to mistake number six is using way too much blush and then number seven is the wrong formula of blush. So as we age, our skin tends to be more dry. If you have more oily skin, then you can certainly use stick with your powder blushes. But if your cheek area is more to the dry side, then you'll wanna reach for a cream blush formula. For me, buying a cream blush is kind of unnecessary because it is darn near the same formula as your lipsticks. So if you've got a really pretty lipstick that you love and it matches your skin tone, and that's a mistake we're gonna to get to here in a second, then stick with that and use that on your cheeks as well. Because as we age, we don't need nearly the same amount of color on our cheeks as we once did. Our face is not nearly as full as it used to be, so we don't need the same amount of product that we used to, and we don't need to put it in the same place because with the loss of collagen, our face has somewhat deflated, like it is what it is. So instead of running out and buying a separate cream blush for spring and summer and fall and winter, I like to just go through my lipstick collection. Now there are several products on the market, Merit has a great one, that is created for and formulated for a blush and lip combo. I don't think you have to buy one that's specifically marketed for lip and blush combo. The formulas just are not that different between the two. So to use your lipstick as blush, I like to just use a brush that I only put on my cheeks and I will go right on the lipstick itself and I'll just put a little bit of a dot right through there. And the reason I like to use a brush is it just allows me to look in the mirror and ensure that my placement is somewhat similar. Now, as I age, I don't really want them right here on the apples of my cheek only because as I smile, that moves. So I like to put my blush two fingers down from my eye and two fingers in from my nose. And then from there, I will just press it in and smooth it out. Now, if you have more full cheeks and you're trying to carve them out a little bit, then right underneath this, you'll wanna add a little bit of contour to cave that in. In my case, my contouring is more natural, more so than I would like it to be, so I don't wanna indent any of this by adding shadow or contour. I, in fact, wanna highlight this hollow area, and you might as well. And then carry that blush as high as you would like, depending on the shape of the face that you have. What you wanna avoid is moving that blush all the way into your hairline, because if you notice, if you've been out working, if you've been working out or you're flushed, you're not flushed right here all the way to your hairline. It's really right through here. So finishing up the base, you wanna be thinking strategically and precision and putting your concealer or your bronzer or your contour or your blush or your highlight in the face where you see on Instagram or Pinterest or TikTok may not be the right placement for you. You wanna take a look at yourself in the mirror and say, where do I have indentions that are aging me? And where those are, you wanna add some brightness to that area. Again, as I was saying, for me, it's right through here 
and right here in the temples. I don't wanna add bronzer or contour through here because I don't wanna make these areas indented even more. Additionally, I don't wanna add highlight right through my cheekbones because that in essence is gonna make my cheekbones stick out even farther. So once you've studied the structure of what your face shape is today, which is probably different than it was just five years ago. If you're over 40, then you really wanna take the time to do this. And you only have to do it once every five years is see where your face has indented. I almost said caved in, but that just applies to me. It's not to apply to you. But where is your face indented and where has it maybe gotten more full? If it's down in this area, then shadow that out with some bronzer or contour. But when you see all those masks everywhere of different highlight and bronze and contour everywhere, just the placement of those won't work on you. So as we've gotten older, we just need to be a little bit more unique and customized with our base application. So for that, instead of doing highlight, blush, contour, concealer, I like to reach for this all-in-one. This is by Physicians Formula. Again, these are not sponsored and I'll link everything down below. I just like this because it gives me a little bit of warmth to the face because of the neutral colors and the more natural tones in here, but there's a little bit of brown to it to just warm up as though I've been in the sun. And there's also just a little bit of pink in it to help give me some rosiness. And whether you have dry skin or oily skin, this step is important because we've just now taken our whole face and made it one shade. And because of the natural contours and light and shadow of your face and the world around you, your skin has natural contours to it. So we don't want to take those away and look sort of flat or one dimensional. So that's why something like this is just very easy and handy. And because precision is an important part of this step, I like to go in with a tapered medium sized brush. It's not too large. I can control the placement. So just find a product like this. And again, I'll link this one down below in case you're just wanting to pick up one that I've already used. Not a used one, of course, not the one I've used, but you know what I mean. And then find the shade that works best for your skin tone. And because it has the pinks and the browns and everything in it that you need, you don't have to be thinking about all those different layers. And for that, I'm just gonna add a little bit right up through here because that's where my face would naturally shade as it went back. So I wanna put some of that back in. I'm not trying to contour anything. I am just trying to set that a little bit and give a little bit of color back to my face. And I like to do a little bit of a figure eight with this. So right through here and then right through here. And again, because I have a small brush, I'm not too worried that I'm going places that I don't wanna go. So right through along the jawline, through the cheeks, kind of over the nose, because if we were out in the sun, our nose would get a little bit of color. So pretty simple, just adding a little bit of warmth and overall color to your face. And to further set your foundation, if you have oily skin, you can take just a little bit of this and go over it a little bit more in those areas where you are more oily. So you can see with just a little bit of precision, the face looks dimensional again, and it looks more natural versus a mask of all one color. All right, the next mistake we're gonna move on to is skipping our eyebrows. We cannot skip our eyebrows, whether you love doing them or you hate doing them, or you're just confused as to how to do them, it's an important step because if you're in this age bracket, we lived through the 80s and 90s where plucking eyebrows was, well, we all know the story. We shouldn't have done it, we did it, but you know, we, we put sun in our hair and we shouldn't have. We sat out in the sun with, you know, Crisco oil on our skin and we shouldn't have. So we're undoing a lot of the damage and one of those is our eyebrows. The eyebrows help play such an important role in the overall construction of the face and the symmetry of the face. And as we age, our eyebrows do get smaller. So in order to have a more youthful appearance, you want those eyebrows to be what they were in your youth or as close as we can get them. And that starts by not skipping them. So I like to just go and brush them straight up so that whatever hairs I have in my eyebrows, I can give them a good height versus combing them this way. Combing them this way just does not give me any height at all. You can see how skinny those are. Just by going in and combing them in the opposite direction, already my natural brow is helping me with the height, but I wanna go in and add a little bit more. And now here's where the tricky part comes in. In order to not look older than you are, you wanna make sure that your brows are not a solid color. You wanna be able to have some variation and some transparency throughout the brows so that it doesn't look like you have just painted these on and they're all one solid piece of 
hair because um, no one's eyebrow is one piece of hair. It's a lot of little hairs and that's what we're trying to create. And so the brows are important for not only the height of them, but also that they start where you want them to start. Because in our youth, our eyebrows were more aligned with the side of our nose, and as we age, our brows get shorter. You wanna bring that brow back to its starting point, which is straight up on the side of your nose, which you can measure from a pencil. And now give yourself the brow that you want. And another thing to think about with brows, you guys, is the color and the tone of your brow. You don't want your brows to be too cool in tone. You really want them to be more of a warm tone because a cool toned brow, and I like my makeup to be more cool tone. My eyeshadows, my blushes, my lipsticks are more on the cool side, but my brows, I want to be a little bit more warm because it just warms up the face. If your brows are too cool on a warm face, it just really looks harsh and misplaced. So think about what is the tone of your eyebrow pencil. This one is in blonde. This is the Brow Wiz by Anastasia of Beverly Hills. And I like to just give it a little bit of a frame and then go back in and comb them up. So now let's see what mistakes we're making on our eyes. The first one is as we age, our eyes tend to get more droopy through here as things start to fall from the loss of collagen. When you take a lighter eyeshadow and you apply it to this droopy area, to the underbelly of the droopy area, you are essentially highlighting it. So let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna take a lighter shadow than my own color. And this one has a little bit of shine in it. It's also a mistake is to use too much shimmer. If I was to go on my eyelid and bring that up on this droopy area, what is essentially is happening is I am pulling that forward and highlighting that droopy area. And now on this side, you still see that same droopy area, but I'm gonna take a shade darker than my skin tone, so it sort of is a shadow color without being too warm or too cool gray toned. And I'm gonna put that shadow at the top of my brush, and I'm just gonna go across this bottom side. I, I keep saying the underbelly. I think that gives you guys an idea of what I'm talking about, the part I'm talking about. The part that's droopy, I just wanna go and shade the bottom of that droop because what that does is it makes it appear smaller and farther back. If you have hooded eyes, this is a great technique to create a faux crease on your hooded eyelid. So you can see just by doing this, and I'm just going again, painting the underbelly, and then you're just gonna wanna soften that color so that it doesn't look so obvious that you put color there and soften it and smoke it out. So see the difference? Isn't that a dramatic difference in the way these two eyes look droopy? This, this part right through here, the droopy part. This side, it looks like it's tighter and pulled back and it's really just the application and technique of a small taper brush and the right color brown for your skin tone. So again, just think about it as like just a little bit darker, a shade or two darker, a color that you'd wear for your contour, that's the color that you wanna use for that shadow. So that was mistake eight or nine. Let's move on to the next mistake, and that is using too much shimmer or not enough shimmer. You wanna use just a touch of glow or shimmer or shine to your eyes, but not too much because it will bring the light to wherever you put the shimmer or shadows. So you don't wanna bring light to where you have a lot of wrinkles, but you do wanna add just a pop of brightness so that it looks as though you're not all matte. This is a good old favorite MAC Naked Lunch. You guys have probably all had this at one time or another. It's just a good always go-to eyeshadow. I just take a little bit on my ring finger, tap it off, and then I like to just go from the outer corner, inner corner, right on my lash line, and leave it right there, just for that little bit of pop of color, but not too much. If you have dry skin, you might wanna reach for a cream eyeshadow. That can be more hydrating for your eye because I use such a little amount, but some people find cream eyeshadows harder to work with. If you do have dry skin and you wanna use a cream, I suggest you use half of the amount that you would use in a powder and then start to blend that out. If you have oily eyelids, but like cream eyeshadow, then you definitely wanna use a mattifying eyelid primer before you apply your cream eyeshadow. But oily skinners, you, oily skinners, you'll wanna set that cream eyeshadow with a powder eyeshadow just to ensure that it stays in place. So from here, you'll wanna apply a little bit of eyeliner, avoiding the darker colors in eyeliner. I'm gonna go with just a nice soft brown. This one is Deep Cocoa Matte from House Labs by Lady Gaga. I just wanna make it appear that my lashes are still thick at the base or the root where those lashes go and using an eyeliner pencil to fill in 
in between the spaces of the lashes is really the look I'm going for. I'm not trying to create an actual eyeliner look, just a little thicker hairline. Something pretty simple like that. And another mistake is not emphasizing the hairline underneath your eye. And as we age, we've lost eyelashes underneath here. So this area is very light. You wanna create that thick lash line back underneath your eyes. By using a soft color that's only two or three shades darker than your skin so that it's not too much of a contrast. And one of the reasons I like this eyeliner pencil is because A, it's gel, so it's easy to work with. It doesn't tug on my skin. And it has a nice brush on the end so that I can use either the thick side or the thin side and move that product really up and in between my eyelashes. So our final mistakes are in the lip area. One mistake that we see all the time in women that are over 50 is they have not adjusted or lightened the lip liner. Even though the look of the 90s with a darker lip liner and the lighter lip, more of that nude lip is in right now, the contrast between the lip liner and lipstick is not as drastic as perhaps it was when we were in our teens. And even if it was that drastic, it would look a little bit misplaced on our more mature skin with the rest of the makeup look as soft and sophisticated as it is. And it does tend to make us look older because it highlights the lip lines and the wrinkles that we tend to get. They call them smoker lines, which is so frustrating because I've never been a smoker and yet, you know, but they happen. They're hereditary and they happen and it just is what it is. And we used this shameless lipstick by MAC on our cheeks earlier. So I want to find a lip liner that is going to go really nicely with that, but not too dark. And I think I've found the perfect combination. I, in fact, I wear this combination a lot and that is NYX Nude Pink with this Shameless by MAC. It's already on our cheeks and looks fine, so let's go with it. Now I should have mentioned, as I was hydrating my face, I put a hydration on my lips. I use Aquaphor so that when I do go to put on my lipstick and my lip liner, those products are being applied to hydrated, moist surfaces. So coloring in the whole area and then applying the lipstick, I like to go in with a lip brush. I just feel like I have a little more control. And our final mistake on the lips is adding a matte lipstick or a liquid lipstick that is very drying to the lips. The MAC Shameless lipstick that I have on is a matte. However, I will finish this look with a little bit of Aquaphor just to keep my lips hydrated and to soften up the look of that lipstick. Adding a formula like Vaseline or an Aquaphor on top of a lipstick shears it out just a little bit. Very similar to if you apply foundation with a damp beauty sponge, you get a little bit more of a sheer look. That's what applying something like this does on top of a liquid lipstick. So I get a really pretty natural flush look to the lips and not a solid color, which is what I like for more of a natural soft finish. So the look is almost complete. I would just go back in with another coat of mascara and then of course my waterproof, set it with a little bit of setting spray and then I am good to go. So I hope these makeup tips helped you in applying your makeup in a way that helps you feel more youthful and that you like the overall look and that you don't get caught in some of these mistakes that we've all made along the way and saves you a little bit of time and helps you just feel really good about what you see when you look back in the mirror after your makeup application. Thanks so much for watching you guys. Please be sure to like this if you liked it and subscribe to the channel and share this with any of your girlfriends that you think may want to learn some new tips and tricks and some techniques on how to apply their makeup for their next big day out or just an every day at the grocery store. I will see you next time. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.